Hey there, Virgo. Welcome to your reading for May 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you would like a look into your own personal situation, you can go ahead and email me. My email is in the description box below. Yeah. Um, send me an email. Tell me a little bit about what, about what you're looking for and I will help you get set up. Yeah. So um, energies are fluid. Time is an illusion. So Take this as it resonates. Don't try and fit it somewhere it wouldn't naturally fit, okay? Just let it fall into place. And if nothing really fits for you, then maybe it's just not a message for you. Or you might want to check back later in the month um, to see if maybe it resonates at that point. Yes? Okie dokie. Um, oh, okay. So I'm, I'm doing it a little bit different, yet a little bit the same for this month. So I'm still starting with the uh, tarot for the general messages for the month. And then I've t I'm bringing, putting the oracle guidance back in the end of the reading. But instead of using the oracle of the unicorns, this month I've decided to use the crystal mandala deck in order to gain some sort of um, more concise, I guess, uh, a little more in-depth uh, oracle guidance for you guys. All right? So why don't we just go right ahead and get straight to it. Yeah, <laughs> here we go, guys. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Virgos, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for May 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys. So as I was uh, channeling your energy before I started recording, um, I was doing a little bit of a pre-shuffle and uh, the Knight of Cups came out twice. The Knight of Pentacles came out. The Two of Cups came out. There was the Two of Wands with the Three of Swords. And then there was a whole mess of other cards. But basically, um, what I feel like is happening for you, Virgos, are... You guys are really, some of you, or at least those of you that I'm channeling for are in a position where you're coming out of some sort of tough situation. Oh, um, at first, when the Knight of Cups came out the first time, it came out with the Ten of Swords, okay? So there's definitely an energy in which there was a heartbreaking situation in the past. Could be a relationship, uh, it could have been a job, a career, uh, you know, um, a creative project, anything. Anything that came to a really abrupt end or was a very tough situation to deal with, I really do feel like that's coming to a complete close if it hasn't closed out already. Because in that last big old mess of cards that came out, it included the world, the queen of wands, the tower, the seven of wands, the five of swords. Um, or was it the five of swords? I think, yeah, it was the five of swords. And to me, what that saying is, somehow either you Virgo or someone else that you are you were connected with probably possibly still have some sort of energetic connection with um somebody came out of that on top and came out of that way stronger than they have ever been before um and really shook some shit up when they came out of that situation uh between the queen of wands and the tower card I mean, like, and the seven of wands, it's like, they're untouchable at this point. Like, if you have, <laughs> I don't say this to discourage anybody. I am just trying to be as clear as possible with the energies that I'm feeling. But if you have someone that you went through a really rough situation with and you guys ended up, like, not speaking to each other or there was a breakup um, or whatnot, whatever, and you're desiring to like reach back out and like maybe clear the air or something like that just be careful because this person is not the person that they were in the past okay you are not dealing with the same person they have absolutely transformed into a bigger brighter stronger more self-confident individual than they were in the past and if you're dealing with a situation in which you know you were manipulating this person you're not gonna be able to do it again They've learned that lesson and they will never let anybody, <laughs> no, they will never let anybody do that to them again. And that's all coming through. And that's what's so like crazy about like this big shakeup that this created between the Queen of Wands and uh, the Tower. It's like, <laughs> you think you're gonna fool me again? Sorry, buddy. <laughs> okay. 
All right, Virgo. So this is either you or it's someone that you're connecting with. Again, take it as it resonates. Okay, guys? It is a general message. So let's get into this. I'm going to shuffle this three times and then we'll see what your messages are for the month of May. Yeah? Here we go. So, one. A two. A three. Three. Yep, this is the third. <laughs> All right, for my Virgos, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of May. Let's see what we've got for you, Virgo. Ooh, my music box is about to fall. Okay, there we go. Boop. Over all energy from a Virgos here. We've got, damn, there it is again, that Ten of Swords. Look, look, y'all, look. This situation, as it stood at some point, regardless of how it stood at one point in the past, it is done. Done, 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 done. Like, it can't be, you can't be, you can't get any more dead than having ten swords in your back. Period. Like, there is, <laughs> you are so dead at this point. <laughs> but also what this means is that this situation is just finally finished and over. Now, for those of you that wish to reconcile, this is a good thing. Because this is the end of whatever... Um, energies from the past that helped feed some sort of toxicity, narcissism, whatnot, whatever. For some of you, however, maybe even unfortunately, it is so done to the point where it's like there really is no need to reconcile. There is, well, maybe not a need, but also maybe not a chance. Anything is possible, all right? Take it as it resonates. Um, but the one thing I want to say the most is that there really is no need to hash it out. There's no need to reconcile. There's no need to discuss it. There's no need to cross paths. There's none of that. I mean, it's just lesson has finally been learned. Karma has been released or is being released and y'all can just go on your own separate ways and be done with it, okay? Ten of Swords, underneath that is the Four of Pentacles. That's not so good. And this is where it comes to the point where like there are some things that need to be let go of. Um, in order for things to really heal. So it might be a situation in which it's a freshly finished situation, but some people are still holding on to some sort of resentment. Um, some people, there is, a, there is a sense of being closed off for whatever reason, you know, take it as it resonates. It could be very well, uh, very necessary that you are or someone is this closed off with the Four of Pentacles. I just feel like I would want to caution against holding on to anything. Yes, stand your ground. Um, hold firm in your convictions, but holding on to resentment and whatnot, mm, that's not so good. Oh, oh, well, looky here. Underneath the Four of Pentacles is the Two of Cups. And the Two of Cups came out during the uh, pre-shuffle. Underneath that is the Page, <sighs> the Page of Swords. All right, so there is still a sense of some sort of connection here. And I feel like someone might want to reconcile. Although, I, whoever it is that's on the outside that's wanting to reconcile with this Page of Swords energy, it still feels really immature. Like to the point where they would rather hover, circle, you know, hidden in stealth mode, um, than actually address the situation. Now, it could be, it could be they are picking up on the fact that someone is still holding on to some resentment, some ill will, some bad blood, maybe. But ultimately, though, the best, and so that could be, that could be what's holding someone back from saying something, from reaching out, even though there's communication that's desired here. Now, here's the thing about it, guys. The reason why, the biggest reason that this person may be holding on to something, whoever this is, is because there was a lack of communication or still is a lack of communication. Or if there is communication, it's immature and petty. So if you want to clear the air, there's going to need to be some sort of communication, period. Someone's just going to have to grow a pair of balls and like reach out and be like, hey, can we talk about this? And honestly, what's the worst that could happen? They say no. Okay. They say no. Bye. Move on. That's it. Done. Boop. <laughs> but either way, there is some sort of situation that has finally come to a close, whether that's the relationship overall or just a certain cycle in a relationship. 
someone's holding on to something, potentially holding on to resentment, but there is still a connection here. Two of Cups. All right? So getting into the first half of your reading here, and I just saw 1010 on the counter. That's hilarious. Um, getting into the first half of your reading here, you can look at this as the first half or the second half of the month. I recommend that you just see it as a big con conglomerate of energy. <laughs> conglomerate, if that's the right word for it. But because um, time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just I would recommend just letting the messages come through and just seeing how they would apply to you. Okay. Excellent. First set of surrounding energies in the first half of your reading. You've got the Queen of Pentacles. Here you are potentially Virgo. You could also be talking, we could be talking about a Capricorn. This is officially the archetype of Capricorn or a Taurus. Okay. Now here's the down low on this Queen of Pentacles. She feels very stoic. It's almost as if she's not paying any mind any longer. Like she's not paying any attention to this situation, to the circumstances. She's focused on her business. She's focused on her life, on her physical manifestation. She's focused on being grounded. She's also focused on healing. And the Queen of Pentacles is an energy in which she is, she will be your ally through and through. No matter how many times you fail, no matter how many times you quote, fuck up, whatever, as long as you are committed to healing, uh, learning your lessons and doing better in the future as you continue on your own path, she is right there by your side. But when she starts to realize that you are really only taking her kindness for weakness, you are taking advantage of her, you are wasting her time, her energy, her efforts, she will turn her back on you. Good luck getting her, getting her to turn back around at that point. So that really could be now, whew, all, that really could be why someone is in this Four of Pentacles energy. Now, you want to talk about the Queen of Resentment? You talk to a Queen of Pentacles who is reversed. Now, I'm not reading reversals, but resentment was something that was really coming through. Someone's holding on to some sort of resentment here. And the Queen of Pentacles is very logical, okay? She's very grounded. Um, she, I like to say that she and the Queen of Swords are besties, but the difference between the two of them is the Queen of Pentacles does integrate emotion into her understanding of reality, okay? So she can be very stern, very logical, very to the point, very witty, but she can also be very resentful because she's got that element of emotion in play here. Oof. So, yeah. <laughs> Queen of Pentacles is coupled with the Knight of Swords. She ain't playing, y'all. Ooh, she is not playing. Oh, man, she is not playing. She will cut you up. And this could be why someone is, like, just kind of hovering here with this Page of Swords energy. Because they know if they step to this queen the wrong way, maybe like they have in the past, they will not like the outcome. I don't think either of them will like the outcome because the Queen of Pentacles may blow her lid a little bit, like lose her cool a little bit and end up reacting in some ways that she may not even be proud of at the end of the day, okay? So maybe this distance is a good thing, for now at least. Second set of surrounding energies in the first half of your reading here, you have the Page of Pentacles. Someone wants to make an offer. Someone wants to send a message. It's almost as if someone wants to start over. Can we start over? Can we start from the ground up? Can we just like put the past behind us and try this again? Now, from the Queen of Pentacles perspective though, it's like she's saying, yes, of course we can, but then she's like, wait a second. Can I trust you? Are you just pulling on my heartstrings? Are you just telling me what I want to hear so that you can manipulate me all over again? Ouch, what happened, Virgo? Holy shit. The Page of Pentacles is coupled with the Three of Pentacles. Okay, looky here, guys. If someone from your past or someone that you're having, you have this pretty tumultuous, we'll call it, history with, is coming up to you wanting to reconcile, wanting to start over, wanting to like turn a new, uh, turn a new leaf, start a new chapter or whatnot. 
they're most likely doing it from a place of self-mastery, but also they most likely want to work together here. The, 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 ace of, the, the, the page of pentacles with the three of pentacles. Okay, there is a desire to work together. Now, Virgo, you could be the one. You could be, there could be two Virgos involved in this. Obviously, there could be a Virgo and another earth sign, or it could be any other sign. But Virgo, you may be the one that wants to approach someone and be like, can we start over? Can we try this again? Can we be team members? Can we be teammates? Can we work together? And honestly, like, I almost feel like I want to cry. Like, this is very heartfelt. It's almost so relieving that I want to cry. Like, I'm getting a little choked up right now. It's very heart-centered. Very heart-centered. And the Knight of Cups did come out in the pre-shuffle. Twice. The first time the Knight of Cups came out was with the Ten of Swords. Very much heart-centered. Learned from the past mistakes. That's good. The challenge in the first half of the reading here is the Two of Pentacles. Balance. Balancing out. And this really feels like balancing out between the individuals. Because this Queen of Pentacles does not feel like someone that's going to change her lifestyle, her outlook on like for, uh, excuse me, her outlook on life for the acceptance or approval of someone else. And so that could have been the issue in the beginning. That could have been really what made this difficult, this situation so difficult between these two people. Because there was a different, differing of opinion, and I feel like someone might have been really trying to control the situation. But now, instead of doing that, you're having to work together. You're having to take your own forms of individuality and balance that out if this relationship or this situation is going to work between the two of you, okay? Two of Pentacles is coupled with the Three of Cups. You see, you two are going to have to come together as the individuals that you are. No ifs, ands, or buts. Um, yes, there could be some sort of compromise that needs to happen in the sense of accepting each other for who you are. But ultimately, if you two want to have this successful uh, union, balance between the two of you, you have to accept each other for who you are. No ifs, ands, or buts about it and learn to love each other for who you are and not try to control the other and be like, well, you can only be, I can only be with you or I can only allow you into my life if you act a certain way. Now that doesn't mean that you don't have your, your own standards or your own boundaries. Like I obviously am not going to recommend that you allow someone into your life that's just gonna cheat on you. Like if that's, if you if you don't vibe with some sort of open situation in a, in a relationship, okay, then that is something that needs to be discussed. But also like the nitpicking and the, the um, I guess that's the best way for to describe it, the nitpicking, you know? trying to mold someone into something that they aren't naturally, that's not going to fly. Okay? That is not going to fly. And that's not unconditional love. That's conditional love. And yes, there are going to be situations in which we have conditions on the relationships that we have with each other, but that's for sake of boundaries, not control. Right? Okay. The closing message or potential outcome in the first half of your reading. Here you have the Eight of Cups. And the first thing I want to say about this is leaving the past behind you. Now, check it out. Some of you could be leaving this situation behind in terms of finding your other two cups to complete this 10. Or maybe you have built up, you've learned enough in your life or you've built up enough where you have stacked these eight cups and now you're just going to look for the cherry on top, the icing on the cake. And you have that right here in your overall energy with the two of cups. Ten of swords, two of cups. Something is done, completed, over. Lessons are learned most likely. Um, someone is standing their ground. Um or at least closed off in some way, but it may not be closed off forever. Maybe it's just closed off for now. Eight of Cups is coupled with 
Yes, judgment. Okay, so it's for some of you, this is definitely an energy of leaving the past behind you and reconciling. Okay, the judgment card is a card of reconciliation, redemption, resurrection, that kind of thing. Um, it's also a card of awakening. Like this, to me personally, judgment represents um, awakening, an ascension process. I do feel like for some of you, whether so two sides of the equation here, we'll talk relationship, like trying to rekindle the relationship and moving forward. Trying to rekindle the relationship, okay, you both have woken up, you both ha are seeing things differently than you have in the past and so now there is an energy of being willing to walk away from whatever happened in the past leaving the past behind you only taking the lessons that you learned in order to do better to move forward and resurrect this relationship between the two of you for others of you that are just completely leaving this relationship behind and moving on to something new you've definitely learned a lot in this process a whole lot so much so that you can confidently walk away from this um, ready to start something new. Understanding love, relationships, yourself, maybe even life from a different perspective. So even if this situation is over, is done, is like never coming back or you're not trying to resurrect it, it is not a failure because ultimately either one of you or both of you have learned lessons here that you can really apply to making your life better as you move forward, okay? Getting into the second half of your reading here, first set of surrounding energies you have, yes, death, boop. Uh, change in perspective is what I just heard very clearly. Um, Scorpio energy, you could be dealing with a Scorpio. Maybe some of you are moving towards a Scorpio, um, but transformation. Again, this could either be a transformation within the relationship, like the standing relationship and transforming it Phoenix from the ashes risen, butterfly out of the cocoon, um, just a brand new start. Or moving forward, there's a transformation within the individuals as they leave this situation behind themselves, okay? Uh, death is coupled with eight of pentacles. Wow. Now, for some of you, this change and transformation is coming about because of all of the hard work that you've done. The craftsmanship. What is that craftsmanship exactly? That is the craftsmanship of your life, of yourself. Okay, there is a sense of self-mastery here. This came out in the, in the second set of surrounding energies in the first half of the reading here. Three of pentacles, a page of pentacles, okay? So... The work that you have done has absolutely influenced this transformation that is happening, that is upon you for this month. Okay, Virgo? Second set around of surrounding energies. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Before I go further, um, it's either the work that you have done or if you want a transformation, if you really want to transform a situation, transmute a situation, you're going to have to do the work. And I don't, I really don't feel like this is anything different for you. It's like you're no stranger to doing work. You might be a stranger to doing this kind of work, inner spiritual soul work. I feel, and it's funny because there are so many pentacles. There are lots of pentacles and lots of cups coming out here. Lots of them. And I feel like for somebody in this, that we're talking to here, you're very used to working with the physical world, to working with the financial, uh, the, the physical, tangible things. Makes sense, you're an earth sign. But what you're needing to learn now is how to work on the spiritual. Death, eight of pentacles, okay? You know how to transform, transmute, do all that in the physical. Now let's start to work in the spiritual and work internally to transform and transmute your own self. Yes? Cool. Second set of surrounding energies for your month of May, Virgo. The Emperor. Uh, Aries energy. You could be dealing with an Aries. You could have Aries in your chart. Um, you could be connecting with an Aries. But this actually is really just about taking your power back, being the master of your own domain, which is exactly what we were just talking about here with death and the eight of pentacles, uh, doing the work to really transform your life from the inside out, okay? 
There is also a sense of taking responsibility, ownership, or some sort of leadership for you. Okay? The Emperor is coupled with... Ooh, the King of Swords. Wow! Uh, Aquarian energy, or maybe a Libra or a Gemini. You also see Aquarius, Libra, or Gemini in the, in the Knight of Swords. However, to me, the Knight of Swords is Gemini energy. You also have more Earth energy with the Page of Pentacles, or, uh, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, but I also see the Pages. I see the Pages and the Knights as the mutable energies, so that would be Virgo in the sense of the Pentacles. Now, yes, leadership with the Emperor and the King of Swords, autonomy, taking responsibility, seeing things objectively, seeing things as they are. I'm very much getting a humble sense of masculine energy or a humble sense of being a leader or the master of your domain with this combination of the emperor with the king of swords. Very humble, but also willing to do the work like willing to get the job done, like willing to take the steps necessary to meet the end goal. But also being very wise, very intelligent, and seeing things very clearly, being very balanced. Seeing, at least if you're not actively seeing things as they truly are, working on that. Like being in a mindset to see that. Truth, justice, and integrity. I feel like whatever has happened that we're talking about, that you're processing, Virgo, for the month of May, there's whatever situation that has come to an end with this Ten of Swords, um, it was probably very humbling. Maybe for both parties or maybe just for one. Quite humbling. The challenge in the second half of the reading here, you've got, ooh, the Two of Swords though. There's some sort of indecisiveness. Ew, maybe this is towards reconciling how to go about reconciling. Two of Swords is coupled with the Sun. Illumination with the Sun. Um, there's almost like a fear here, or maybe the Two of Swords is representing doubt. Yeah, I was hearing doubt. Doubt that you two will ever be able to come together again. Doubt that you two will ever be able to reconcile. But the sun here is saying, regardless of what path you'd go on, it's still going to be okay. Lots of twos here. We're only missing one, the two of wands. But we have the two of cups, the two of pentacles, the two of swords. Balance. Integrity, honesty, humility. It could be pride and ego that is keeping someone from seeing clearly how they can rectify the situation, how they can move forward, how can they reconcile, how can they heal. It could be because the sun could represent narcissism, ego. Also, it's Leo energy. You could be dealing with a Leo, Leo or you could have Leo in your chart. And it really might be a sense of pride and egotism. That could be the blockage in reconciling here. It really could be. I really feel like if there is some sort of reconciliation to be had here, both sides of the party are going to have to put their ego to the side, put their pride to the side, and like really face each other and address the situation. There needs to be some sort of communication. Page of Swords, which can represent Gemini energy or another air sign, or, and the King of Swords, clear and concise, honest communication. Closing message or potential outcome in the second half of your reading here, you've got... The Empress, my, my, my. We've got counterparts on the table between the Emperor and the Empress. Abundance. The Empress is coupled with the Ten of Pentacles. Wow. Oh, there's definitely a counterpart here. There is a counterpart here. Not gonna lie. You have the Emperor and the Empress. Could we potentially be talking Twin Flames? Sure, I guess so, because honestly, throughout the trend, the, throughout while I've been, you know, channeling for reading on and going through my own situation with the Twin Flames uh, uh, journey, um, I have seen the Emperor as the Divine Masculine, the Empress as the Divine Feminine. That's normally how it is depicted. Um, 
And what I'm seeing here is, yes, you do in fact have a counterpart situation. Not gonna lie, no questions asked, or you know, it's like, it's, it's very clear to me. You have a counterpart situation, especially because you have the two of cups at the top of the reading in your overall energy. Now, keep in mind, this is not the lovers. This is the minor arcana version of the lovers, okay? But there is a need for people to come together on the physical plane as two individual beings, regardless of the soul connection that you may have with each other. So like if you are twin flames, like regardless of the fact that you have that strong energetic connection, you will always be connected to each other. You need to come together as physical beings, as spiritual beings having a physical experience, but as two individual, probably very, very different people, opposites, but opposites attract and counterparts to those opposites, right? So with the Empress and the Ten of Pentacles here, whoever the feminine aspect of this situation is, she, I mean, she's everything. She has everything, he or she, it doesn't matter. It's just energy. It's not gender. He or she has everything that they want, everything that you need or that someone could want or need to have the life the family, the home, the marriage, the kids, the, the career, everything. You, I mean, everything. And she has the potential to help manifest everything that you desire and that she desires. And when you two come together, then you can ultimately create this, whatever the Ten of Pentacles is, ultimate physical fulfillment, right? But when it comes to the masculine side, there needs to be communication. The emperor and the King of Swords. The Emperor is the master of his domain, his or her domain. They know exactly what they want. They have no problem going after it. I mean, that's masculine energy. The masculine goes forward and gets, does, is the doer. The feminine is the manifester in the sense of energetic resonance, right? Is the magnetic one, is the one that pulls things in to her. If you want it, masculine emperor, you have to decide and take the action. You have to communicate. You have to. Because even though this empress is very, very intuitive, damn near psychic, could probably read your mind, she's not going to rely on that. She shouldn't have to. If you want something, take it. Do it. Manifest it. Make it happen. <laughs> okay because otherwise she's just gonna sit here and be like whatever whoever is the best alignment for me will come forward if it's you great if it's not oh well somebody else will and she's really not even worried about it because she has everything right here everything that she needs is already within her so it's not even about completing each other. And very much so, the, the emperor is the same way. He pretty much has everything he needs too. So it's not about completing each other, it's about complementing each other. And if you, if you really want something, then you have to go for it. Get your pride and your ego out of the way. And that goes for both of you, both masculine and feminine, emperor and empress. Pride and ego needs to go out the window. And y'all need to come together as two honest, open individuals. Yes? All right, Virgo. Let's get your closing message here. Your Oracle Guidance from the Crystal Mandala deck. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, my Virgos. For the month of May 2019. Here we go, Virgo closing message please spirit for my virgos for may 2019 there it is card number 29 well 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 isn't that a number 11 <laughs> ascended master kuan yin and pearl divine rebel mm, look at you virgo here we go Divine Rebel. There we go. We bring you the blessing of the Divine Rebel. Divine Rebels shake things up, 
create a divine disturbance and refuse to play by the rules. They do this because they love divine love. They know there is nothing as powerful as the unconditional love of the divine. It will have its way in the world, in the hearts of all living beings. It will not be tamed, controlled, restricted, or denied. If there is a rule that gets in the way of that love, then the divine rebel will find another way so that love can have its way. The divine rebel in you is not meant to do things the way others say you should. Mm -hmm. Some people may become frustrated with you because they won't know why you have to stand up and speak your truth. That's okay. Divine rebels are not always understood, but they are respected by those who are ready to make love more important than fear and who are willing to contribute constructively towards healing of the world. So there you have it, Virgo. Ultimately, though, I do feel like this is going to be a good month for you for clearing. Yeah? Much love to you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful. Again, if you would like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. My email is in the description box below. Yeah? Have a great month. And I look forward to connecting with you again for the month of June. Yale? Take care. Mwah! Bye.